In order to better understand friction, there is one case we kind of have to realize is occurring. Uh, you may have noticed from time to time if you've ever tried to move furniture, um, if you've ever tried to move any kind of or slide any kind of heavy object, you'll notice that initially you have to apply quite a large amount of force before that object will begin to move. However, once you get that object in motion, if we remember back to Newton's first law, an object at rest will want to remain at rest, so you'll have to apply a fairly large force, whereas an object in motion wants to remain in motion, and you may notice that you don't have to apply as much force once the object is moving in order to keep that object moving. Uh, if you ever want to just do a small experiment to detect this, walk into your living room uh, or your bedroom maybe and take either a chair or a desk and try and move it, try and slide it across the rug, you'll notice a certain amount of force is required to get that piece of furniture into motion. However, once you have it moving, you can apply significantly less force than you needed to, to initially get that object moving. So we have two cases we're looking at. There's one where your object is not moving, and we call that case the static case. Static in physics is just one way of saying not moving. It's completely at rest. There's actually an entire field of, or an entire area of physics called statics, which is just the study of things that are not moving balanced forces, things like that. Uh, the other case is not as straightforward, but when you have objects that are moving, that is known as kinetic or kinetics. So the static case, you have no movement. The kinetic case, you have movement. So static and kinetic are going to begin to be terms we use to talk about objects that are not moving and objects that are moving. So we have two cases, as we said, the static and the kinetic. This brings us to the title of this video, the coefficients of friction. In order to understand friction or to better be able to calculate it, we have to take into account what are known as these coefficients of friction. Uh, before we do that, we should also talk a little bit about why these two cases uh, are different. And if I magnify these two surfaces right here, the floor and the box itself, what you'll see is that nothing is perfectly flat. So we have this section, which would be the bottom of this box, and it's resting on the floor. And despite the fact that these both look fairly flat, and if we were to run our fingers over them, uh, we'd feel very flat surfaces. Under a microscope, uh, you'll actually notice that nothing is perfectly flat. Uh, now, when this is in a static case, these little ridges have really had uh, enough time to really interlock with one another. Since there's no motion, they are you know, deep within the crevices of one another, and if you try and push this object, you're really going to have to come overcome all of these interactions between these two surfaces. So it takes a fairly large amount of force, depending on the object, in order to get this object to start moving. However, once you do have this object moving, uh, these ridges don't necessarily have as much time to re-interlock. They actually wind up sliding over one another, so while there is still some friction, you'll notice that there's not as much time for this block to really fall down and interlock with these grooves. Instead, they just kind of slide over one another. Uh, one way I try and equate this is imagine you're on the beach and you really have a chance to like dig your fingers into the sand. If someone were to try and pull you, they could, but they'd have to apply a fairly large amount of force. Whereas if you were moving over the top of the beach and then tried to dig your fingers in, it would be significantly harder. Because as you're moving, your fingers are not really given enough time to really push down into the sand. Instead, your fingers will drag more along the top. And while you will generate some resistance, not nearly as much had you been given the chance to really dig your fingers into that sand prior to being pulled. So this is where the difference between static and kinetic friction uh, come into play. And we're going to start to take a look at how we can analyze these and how they can actually help us take a look at forces. Uh, the next thing to realize is there's a Greek symbol referred to as mu, and mu is the actual coefficient of friction. We have two of them. We have mu sub s, which is the coefficient of static friction, the frictional force which must be overcome to set an object in motion, and mu sub k, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is very simply the amount of friction that is resisting the motion once the object is moving. Mu sub s will actually increase and increase. Um, I apologize. The, the mu sub s will not increase. The static frictional force will increase as you pull an object. It will resist that motion. 
but the static is the amount of friction that's acting on the object prior to movement. So if you have a table that's at rest in a living room, say, and you try and pull on that table, if you only pull a small amount of force, a very small, you'll notice that table doesn't move. But since you're applying a force in one direction and the table's not moving, there must therefore be an equal and opposite force in the other direction. That is the static friction. As you increase your pull on that table, it may still not move, but that force of friction will be increasing right along with the force with which you are applying to the table. You're going to have to hit a certain threshold of force that you apply before that table begins to move. That exact moment, that is when you've overcome the static friction. And then the friction resisting your motion will be the kinetic friction, which we'll see is actually less. So static friction, friction you must overcome in order for this object to move from rest, and the kinetic friction, once that object is in motion, that is the frictional force that is resisting that change in motion. So it's the same concept here. It's, they're both friction. The friction needed to set an object in motion and the friction resisting an object that is in motion. If we take a look, the static coefficient of friction, it's actually just a ratio. I should have said this previously. Mu, or the coefficient of friction, it's just the ratio of the force of friction to the normal force. And it's actually, actually the same equation for the kinetic coefficient of friction. It's the ratio of the frictional force. Apologize, that might be hard to see. The frictional force to the normal force. The difference is for the static coefficient of friction, it's the static frictional force. And for the kinetic coefficient of friction, it's the kinetic force. So the amount of friction statically that you must overcome to move the object and the amount of friction kinetically that resists the object that is currently in motion.